What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Planet Xbox Podcast. I think we're episode... I'm lost. What episode are we on, Attic? Are we on like 20... That's your job. I, th- I think we're on like 27 or 28. Um, chance it, 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 We could be potentially on 30. I have to check uh, uh, BG's uh, channel. Um, for real, for real. But... uh. Apologize, guys. Uh, we made a well. I made a blunder. I won't. I won't give Attic any credit for the blunder for the last episode of why it felt like we were on a hiatus. Um, I uh, so we recorded a podcast last week. Uh, right which, after the direct. Right after the, the direct. So we kind of actually have to go. Back. <laughs> so we recorded a, a podcast right after the direct, and uh. My audio was there, Addict's warrant, and that warranted uh, BG to come through and fix my audio setup so that doesn't happen again. you didn't tell me for like three days. Because I didn't realize that it wasn't... I I, I told you when he told me. Uh, I was in like... So so I apologize. I would have reshot it if you would have said something. Yeah. um, Like, let me... uh, so that was the era why we missed the podcast. And the last podcast was 26. So this is uh, episode 27. Um, yeah, so that sucked. That, and that was that's all on me. I, that was my blunder, my mistake, my bad. Uh, but we're back and we're, we're ready to correct that. So we got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, but before we uh, get into that, I do want to talk about what, what, are you, what are you playing, man? I know you got a couple games, uh, big games that just came out to start the year off. I think you're involved in some of them, right? I'm playing Infinite Wealth. Okay. It does look like I'm going to get bullied to play uh, Tekken 8. Not a fighter. Uh, So we'll see how that goes. I did tell Cog and them, I was like, if you guys bully me into playing Tekken 8, Mm -hmm. and I I, I learn that I like head-to-head fighters, and I become good and I start beating you guys, you will not hear the end of it. Like, you... (laughs) This will be the biggest L you have ever received in your life. Because if I start beating people, because I would say that's a very, it's a very intimate type of game. You yeah. and one person fighting. Don't, don't let me get loose on that. Yeah, um, I've never uh, been able to master the art of fighting games. So Tekken, what were we on Tekken 8 now? Tekken 8 does Nine, look ten, good. I don't know. It looks great, man. But you got are you playing this on uh, you got Tekken on console PC? Um PlayStation. They sent me a PlayStation. Okay. Uh that works. Um uh, well Tekken does have great history on PlayStation, but uh gra- the game looks amazing. Um that's for sure. The game looks uh amazing from what I can see. On both PC and console, it runs slightly not runs. It looks slightly better on Xbox. It has the resolution advantage there, tight 60 FPS. So tell uh, Bandai Namco they they sent you the wrong version. They sent you the wrong version. Um, how's uh Infinite Wealth, man? It's a, this I it, it came like to high Metacritic scores. I think it's an early game of the year nominee. You think? Maybe I don't know. Uh, You're yeah, uh, right now I I haven't played enough to like really justify if it's a game of the year contender or not mm-hmm. uh, but what i say what i played on it it's a it's a solid experience so far that's what's up i want to get into it but this is going to be a situation where i feel like i don't know how many good games are coming out um i want to play infinite wealth but i feel like i would be doing my self a disservice if i don't complete my playthrough of the first one like a dragon um yes. and, and so i, I i'm i'm going to finish that before I do this, um, I am working on a game myself. Like, um, I'm playing another game. I, I, I don't know if <laughs> embargo's up yet, but um, soon the game um, that I'm it, it comes out soon. It's it's I I would say it's a it's a good game. It's a sleeper game because I don't think anybody is ex- expecting it. Um, but I've been busy with that pretty much game. I've also been playing the game an- anom- anomaly. Not, am I saying that right? It says like a little like 2D, like summer, cyberpunk, like esque side fighter, beat em up shooter game. Uh, I, I got review access. I would like to, I, I, I will likely be doing a video about it 
um, in the next coming days. Um, I, I got it's like one of those things you get the review code like the day of release. So I really I couldn't do much happen. about it. Yeah. So um, but the game is decent, man. Um, matter of fact, let me let me not disrespect the game and give you the proper title of uh, the game. So everybody know what I'm talking about. Um, I got it. You know what, Attic? And maybe you can help me. I want to get to a point where we, if we talk about video games that we're playing or at least or preview or review. I got to make sure I'm in position to have the gameplay uh, displayed. Um, and I actually probably could do it because I did record some gameplay of it. Um, but the game that I was referring to is um, uh, Anolomy. Uh, damn, I can't say the word Anolomy. Anolomy. <laughs> I can't say it. Anolomy, Anolomy. Agent. Ano yeah, what you just said, Agent. Like, for some reason, I can't, I can't say it, uh, but uh, that's how um, I've also been uh, playing. Obviously, I've been working my way through Resident Evil 4 one week at a time. Uh, how I are you feeling a... about that game? Let's take a couple minutes because mm -hmm. you're coming from someone that didn't really play the original one too much. Um, I, I can't say I didn't play because I was a day one purchaser of Resident Evil Did 4 for the game. It, no, I didn't beat the game. I, I know I didn't okay, beat it. I think so I, I don't I even know like... if I made it to... I don't know if I made it out of the first area. You know what I mean? I thought You're the game about the, the first island. Yeah, the first island, like like be, like to the point. You know how um, you know when they they're at the beginning, pretty much the beginning of the game, pretty much what I'm learning. I don't know if I ever made it past that. Um, but I struggle with Resident Evil games, and you know this very well. Like I needed your help on Resident Evil Seven. Uh, obviously, uh, I couldn't get through Resident Evil Two. I still got to beat that. Resident Evil 3, I have to beat that. I haven't uh I didn't play Res I played Resident Evil Village, didn't beat it because I it's just like for some reason Resident Evil it's like for some reason I don't know what it is. Like I just don't know how to play them. I guess that's what it comes down to. Um, but Resident Evil 4, I was like, you know what? I we were talking about it, I think maybe two episodes ago. Maybe on episode 25 or 24, you said you, you mentioned something to the degree Resident Evil 4, like when it yeah, I games still last year. intend on going back and playing them. So when you said that, I was like, oh, we game share. I forgot. I got access to that game. Let me download it. <laughs> and so um, I started playing and I played the demo. I didn't beat the demo, believe it or not. I mean, I, the, the demo just ran its course. But um, no, I, I, I've been playing it and just like just literally treating it like just a regular, you know, video game and wanting to get serious. The thing is that I remember in Wep earlier episodes of Weapon Will Podcast, BG was like, oh, you know, now that you can parry, it makes the game a lot easier. I was like, parrying? Yeah, I mean, if you give me a game where you parry, that makes me feel good because I'm I'm confident in my parrying uh, capabilities. And um, once I was able to figure that out and then work around the game's puzzles, that's what really trips me up is puzzles and then feeling overwhelmed because the zombies or the monsters in Resident Evil games they don't go down, right? They don't go down. You got to empty a clip, and I will. I I was always worried about uh, scarcity and ammo and guns, but. I kind of got my like hook. The game got this hook and hooking me. I know what to do in regards to ammo and, and and crafting, and and guns. And the now is just more so just finishing up uh, the story. And I'm in. Uh, I've I've reunited with Ashley. I think that's where I uh, finished up at. Reunited with Ashley. Um, I'm back into like this. Uh, I, I think I don't know if I'm back in a castle or back in a church area or whatever. Uh, but um, it's getting kind of cr uh, crazy. Uh, but I like the game. I, I I still wouldn't agree with this nominee for game of the year. I, I don't think it should have been in that category, but it is a pretty damn good game. And I'm glad, I'm glad I'm playing it. And I, I foresee it being um, I should be able to finish the game probably sometime next month. Uh, I, I'm working on a, a, a couple games. Um, so that's the reason why I haven't beat it completely. I, I, I got my first achievement in Power World, caught my first Pokemon or whatever you call it, pal. Uh, what? Power World. Yeah, I, I got on last night. You and you, I, I invited you to the party. You didn't join. I I couldn't join your game because your game wasn't joinable. Oh no, you. I was in the Discord. Oh okay. The Power yeah, if, World. If, I need your help there for sure. Yeah, I I played a lot of Power World, like a ridiculous amount. Like I I've streamed it five times. Oh, real on the uh, Addicts Arena, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna try to join one of those uh, streams um, for sure uh, to try to get some.
gameplay because that's that'll be another game that I would like to work on in the in the process. Um, that gamer score. I do want it's only it's only it's only ten achievements, bro. I gotta I gotta get them before uh I have to get those. And speaking of uh ten achievements, I, I think I'm I'm I think I'm on the verge of a crossing thirty thousand gamer score this month, uh the month of January. Uh I think the most do I've you ever done. Elaborate in... the games that you're playing <laughs> to get those. Hey, some of these games are tough actually. Um yo, but it started it, it, believe it or not, I started with RoboCop and Cocoon. I got I got 100% completion on RoboCop, 100% completion on Cocoon. So the recognizable regular games, right? So nobody can take that away. Um, but then I kind of got crazy because um, there's this person on Twitter who follows me on Xbox who literally kind of just uh, tries to mirror my games or whatever to outdo me. And we were going at it. And just checking each other, and then I he he did something ridiculous that pissed me off, so I unfriended him. So I I don't you have, unfriended I, him. I unfriended him. I didn't want him on my leaderboards. It made no sense. So he, j- j- just to clarify, so the 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 listeners know, you unfriended someone because you got tired of them beating you in gamer score. I got tired. I got sick and tired of them. Pretty much put me in a position where I feel like I had to buy some bullshit games just to do. Because what he would do is I would get up by like 2,000, 3,000, and then I would take a break and play my regular games like Resident Evil 4 or like uh, the other game I'm working on. And then he'll come back, play some bullshit games that are worth 3,000 or 5,000 gamer score. And I'm like, yo, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this all month because at the end of the day, it's not worth it. So I had to get rid of the toxic. That's the toxin. So I got rid of the toxin. Uh, except, isn't that more of a your behavior and not no, necessarily his? Because he, he's keep in, engaging. If you would just let him, he's win, a nab- he's a enabler. Over. He's enabler, influencing. He's enabling that you. Yeah, I will re-add him in February. <laughs> but um, do, do you want to say who it is? It's holy one. Holy one. So yeah, holy one. You you are essentially rigging your friends list to make sure you win. I don't talk to half the people on Xbox anyway. So I've been looking to do some uh, cleansing. Uh, for, I was like, I, and if I if I kept it to only people, but you that just I said actually, you're going to re-add him. So this isn't part just, of your just, I just want to see what he, you know, what he landed at, you know, but, um, but he's a uh, shout out to Holy One. He does nothing but play video games and then corny video games that try to outdo me on Xbox. He doesn't, when it comes to but regular you, games, he's not messing with me. Games. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Here's a problem. I, I did kind of game comparisons. When it comes to regular double A indie triple A games, he, he's not touching me. Is it, when it comes to those bull crap games, those four ninety nine achievement games, then yeah, he 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 has access to probably more funds to buy those games in bulk and and, and play them for about twenty minutes, and then but and he's set for the month. Also playing these same. Uh, games. Yeah, but I'm doing that just to keep my head above water because you, uh, regular, before you came across him, you never bought these corny games. I wasn't buying them. No, no, like. What happened was I think Xbox encouraged us to, who, to get the gamer score. Remember they had those uh, months where, you know, the rewards back when rewards meant something they had like, you get like, 10, the high, yeah, yeah. Month. So yeah. that's what encouraged me. And um, it, it, it does feel good when you have a bunch of completions, right? You know, I don't think I'll, I'll ever care about a platinum or when Xbox finally get out of the gaming business, maybe I'll care about platinums. But uh, I like the I like the number. I I think I'm going to cross three hundred thousand gamer score this year. Lord really? willing. Are you in Are you in the two hundred thousand yet? I'm two hundred seventy thousand as of right now. Hey, you, there, there's no way you don't pass three hundred thousand playing these corny ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. But I got about. But if you notice, if you look at my Twitter on my games tracker, my games beat tracker, I don't include these games. Like I don't include them as like games beat, you know what I mean. So right now, this is just this is just your pettiness. This is pettiness. This is ultimate pettiness. I had people inboxing me on Xbox. How did you get your gamer score so high? What are you playing? I, no, I tell them straight up, BS games. That's what they are. But uh, that that was all they uh, got to do is compare games with you. Yeah, that's all they got to do. What's funny is I I share a digital library with you, so I can see these games. Yeah. Look, oh, smooth bought a game. What game is it? I look at, oh, it's this bullshit. But but, but I would like nice. to get the 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 completion in, in in Pal World. So you're gonna help me do that. And you know, Pal World is gonna be one of those games, right? It's in game preview. So fi- by the time it finally launches, it's gonna have like three thousand game score because after the buzz get fixed and they started adding more stuff to story element, things that actually matter, some multiplayer elements. I think all the achievements in this game is ma- relegated to just catching 
Pokemon or pals fighting different pals, right? Um, a good portion of it, and then there's like the majority of it is like beating the like the the tower bosses. Okay, have you beaten a tower boss yet? No, I haven't. All right, well, they're pretty powerful, but I do know that once you get to that point mm -hmm. where you where you're just you got everything you need. You could just run them all. You could run over them all one at a time, like it was very easy. Uh, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Definitely looking forward to right that. Right now, I'm leveling up. That's the thing I'm doing now. I'm just leveling my pile up. What's funny is I had like a wooden, I had a, um, like it was a wooden shell mm -hmm. and a stone fortress inside of it. And the whole point of that was is if I ever migrate that to like an online server, if they allow you to do that, I wanted the people who come to attack me think that my base is weak. Oh, it's got this wooden it, it, out structure. So it would either A, make them underestimate me, or B, they don't want to raid me because they just think I don't have anything. Uh, well, then I got raided by the AI, and it caught my my whole wooden infrastructure on fire. Oh, wow. So It, 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 it literally burnt. So Power World is the latest, you know, sensation, independent sensation, small game uh, that blew up overnight. Eight million in sales from what was last reported. Number one of the highest selling games on Steam's or the highest player count on Steam since PUBG uh, is, is ranked second, I believe, at this time. And uh, it's obviously a game day one on Game Pass. So our Xbox, uh, uh, you know, family are claiming this game as an exclusive as much as uh, PlayStation fans claim Baldur's Gate 3 uh, as an exclusive for a few months um, as it was, you know, the hot commodity uh, that wasn't on Xbox uh, earlier. But Power World's in game preview. Now, this uh, developer, is, I guess, is notorious for not putting games on PlayStation. I think their first game was Cratopia, uh, and that still isn't on PlayStation um they got uh there was some like they got they, were, they got to some banter with some fanboys in regards to its release on playstation playstation doesn't have a, a preview program so that's part of the reason why it's there but it is in game pass uh it has the um the cool thing about it is like obviously it's popular on internet popular on steam and it's on game pass so word of mouth is allowing this game to uh to get shine and it's also now one of the most uh, uh play games on xbox even though uh unfortunately the xbox version and the steam version are you know different versions the xbox got an older version of the game game is kind of ugly in my opinion it could use some, <laughs> i know it's in game preview it could use some some optimization uh and hopefully that comes soon um but um shout out to them i mean hopefully they don't get themselves in legal trouble with uh the pokemon company and nintendo because a lot of the pals um are what to me look like pokemon knockoffs uh to the nth degree uh <laughs> some of them like i don't i don't know man i don't know how what they did or if they had like an artist who designed these or if they you know allegedly went through ai and the ai just pretty much spit out pokemon um who knows but what do you think uh of power world success and impending you know legal uh challenge uh from nintendo do you think there's a case there um, first off, PlayStation's had preview games in their system before. They had Tim Tim. Literally says in the promoting uh, material, preview game exclusive to PlayStation. So it's not necessarily a matter of they don't have the means to do this as if PlayStation deems you worthy doing it. And where Tim Tim was exclusive, I guess they felt like that was, you know, worthy. As far as like the lawsuit thing, it could happen. I don't think because the thing is, is they're they're issuing cease and desist to people sharing the mod for the game, turning it into Pokemon. So you mean to tell me they have the ability to do that, but they can't shut down the game if it's if they stole their 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 got their designs? Yeah. And maybe it takes a little bit more longer because they try shut the whole game down. But to me, like if you were going after them, you wouldn't just announce on the internet we're going after them, we're investigating them. You would just shoot them down one random morning. Yeah, um, I I, I kind of read it the same way too. I feel like if they had a case, they would they would act on it, right? And I don't think they have um, a, a a case uh, because the game itself overall 
it's too different than your standard Pokemon game. It's just the likeness of some of the Pokemon that really they would have they could challenge. But uh, then again, I think it's different enough where I don't think it goes anywhere. And people, people are like trying to reach with some of these designs. Like they are similar in some degrees, but they'll they'll act like okay, this this Pokemon he was on four legs. This one's on two, but they mm-hmm. kind of look alike. Being on two legs and four legs is a pretty big distinguisher when it comes to a model design. Would you not agree, kid? Yeah, no, it's 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 a, it's a big difference. Yeah, it's that like look like you know. I get it. Some people are upset. You should be more upset for Nintendo having this formula for for decades and never used it besides anything else but their turn base. That's who you should be more yeah. upset with is them. But uh, Power World again, popular game shout out to the what they call pocket team the pocket guys or whatever i forget the name of the studio i don't know what their team is uh but they're enjoying uh the success um i would like to get into it again my beef with games like power world is the survival aspect of it it's the reason why i can't get into conan it's the reason why i can't get into arc uh minecraft uh the the survival element there's a a bunch of games that that's niche and, and and Microsoft Xbox they dabble into this genre a lot and they're probably on, the only major uh first party that dabbles in this type of genre as well you know with like stuff like State Grounded. of Decay Grounded and stuff like that uh so they 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 supply games so on Xbox Xbox guys that are used to playing these type of games me personally I'm an Xbox guy but I'm not interested in those type it's- of uh games. Not to mention they actually work with um like Ark is in Game Pass, and that's mm-hmm. like probably one of the biggest survival type of games you can have. Like yeah. they they've been doing this for a while. It's like look, like I understand like I don't really go out to Nintendo people for wanting them to say something. Because at the same time, even though I don't agree with them going after them, I could kinda understand why people think they should. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you can look at this and say, okay, th- this this looks a little spooky. Uh, but as far as like people saying, oh, this game needs to be shut down, it's exact copies, I, I don't agree with that. I-, I think this game has similarities for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to say it's an exact copy, I think that's uh that's stretching it. Yeah. Um again, it, they did it they I feel like they did enough um to be unique and it, it's it apparently, it's the game that every uh, body wanted, but it's out. It, it's out. It's hot. It blew up overnight, pretty fast. Um, it's on Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, and um, Steam PC, PC Game Pass. Um, the episode we missed uh, last week, well, we didn't miss, is recorded. Probably release it as an exclusive to members. If anybody wanna uh, listen to a one side podcast, but uh, it was forty five minutes last episode that we recorded that's unreleased. Um, we talked about the Xbox Direct, and we could just uh do it. Not really, a, I guess, a quick a recap, or we could touch up on, you know, what was there. Um, I think I asked you what grade did you give the uh the Xbox Direct uh last week? Uh, I think I said a a seven eight is where I would give it, like around that area. Mm-hmm. Okay, and your I I recall you saying your biggest issue. Uh, with the direct was lack of solid release dates. I think we got yes, one so solid. I, release I date. felt like it's been long enough, or I wouldn't be like I. I understand, especially people like myself, where we're just like, look, we we're tired of seeing games without release dates, and I get it. Like you don't necessarily have to get release dates these days because of the way the industry is handled. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's just like just because they don't have to doesn't mean we want to see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you with the lack of release date. I think Hellblade was the only one with the release date. The others obviously coming later. I think that's because they all are coming at like, um, you know, the second half of the year, Q3, uh, Q4. Um, but I'm going to say, man, uh, I did like the direct. I, I thought it was a better direct than last year. Um, and people probably say that's recency bias. 
I don't think so. The biggest thing, what made the, the Direct so special last year was a couple of reasons. One, we weren't used to Xbox having a Direct, right? A, a good Direct, right? Um, and they hit us with the surprise of Hi-Fi Rush, uh, which was like a shadow drop, and it was a quality game. It wasn't no BS game. It was a quality game. Uh, it rated highly. Um, so when that happened, it was like, all right, we get used to this. But when you look in hindsight, when you look at all the other games that were shown, Redfall, Forza, Minecraft Legends, and I believe um, was the Elder Scrolls, uh, Elder Scrolls mm-hmm. update. Those are all essentially mediocre uh, games, right? You know, Redfall was mediocre, bad. Uh, Forza didn't live up to the hype, and um. Minecraft Elder, Legends was one. Of them. Minecraft Legends was it's like all right, it's not for every one type game, that right? You know, it it is what it is. It was the, it was the hour, right? Minecraft Legends was this year's era. A- era was this year's Minecraft essentially when it was showing. It's like all right, we don't care, but it's there, but we don't care. Um, and then the Elder Scrolls. Uh, so the thing is, so I feel like this year it was more quality hits, temple games, games that we thought. We're all launching like maybe in different different respective years. At earlier was it last year we were talking about Indiana Jones as of like 2026, 2025, right? We we weren't thinking of like, you know, that would be a big fall game in the future, right? So when you consider Avowed, Hellblade 2, and Indiana Jones, those games are all big games. They're all coming this year, and they're like, I think the those games are big enough. Uh, to have their own directs, and um, and the the quality of the games are just better. They're they're all I think all pretty good games. I think every game that's uh that's that was in that direct are games that will likely land at like in eighty five or better. Uh, when they release on Metacritic, um, I think they all will land at an eighty five or better. I didn't see anything that looked mediocre or trash at this game. Uh, at at that direct hellblade obviously looks gorgeous it's not for everyone i know people were complaining that the game is you know 50 dollars and it's digital only um so people got really smoked for that uh when they see 50 dollars, it's like oh this is not good enough this is is the game is not as big the game is uh it, it, there's no improvement etc cetera, etc cetera. uh so there's that argument um avowed people had like you know are pretty much, I guess, indifferent about it. Me personally, I like what I saw from Avowed. I like the graphics. I like Obsidian's RPGs, uh, their style of RPGs. Uh, I think people had issues with the, like the the field of view or the, the way the combat or the, the first person view looks. Um, the, some, somebody said it looked like a VR game. I, I mean, I was in disagreement with that, but I think what it is is that they're trying, they're creating. And this is going to sound bad, but I don't think the game, I don't think the product is going to turn out bad. I think Obsidian is making a in-depth but casual RPG game. Casual to the point where it, I feel like they're not putting boundaries on it. They, they're making it like a really approachable, very accessible because uh, you're going to be able to do wield wands and stuff like that or a gun and a sword in their hand. So I, I feel like, yeah, it may, it could have kind of looked odd, but when you think about the mix and, and matching of uh, weapons and stuff, you're not going to be beholden to either a sword and a shield or only a ball, bow and arrow. I think they did something where they got to make both hands work left and right, and it has to feel natural. And I think they likely nailed that, but it's probably at first glance, uh, from a visual standpoint, it, it's not like transitioning right, but I think with a little bit of time, they'll polish that up. And I think that's honestly probably just a FO. FOV adjuster adjustment. I agree. I think that Microsoft's going to have a pretty solid year. Uh, you know, are, are they going to hit everything out of the park? No, but but I think they're going to have enough that justifies the time that they went into. You know, a lot of people think this year might be better than last year, which is crazy if you think about it, because I felt like last year was a really solid year. I'm one proponent. I believe 2024 will be better than 2023. I say that confidently. I think 2023 is overrated. Not to say that I didn't have any uh, good games. I, like, I think 2022 was pretty decent. 2021, in my opinion, so far of the 2020s, was the best all year so far. 
uh, all, all of the 2020s. I think 2021 was the best year for video games so far. 2023 coming in at a a, a, a close, a, I would say a close second. And I think 2024 will eclipse uh, both years. Now, a lot of people will disagree with me uh, for some reason. And, and the reason what proved that 2023 was all that great, the Game Awards. The Game Awards, when you look how, how consistent the nominations were, the same six games, the same five games. And I'm like, in a year that was full of great games, but you keep nominating the same five games for every award. It was like, to me, that's not great. That is not great. Do you think that's a lot of just... Not necessarily the other games weren't good, but those five games are like just drastically higher than those other games. No, because if 2023 was that great, you would have a, a diverse nomination list across the board. You know what I mean? Because that means you could be like, all right, this game didn't get nominated. This batch of games didn't get nominated here, but now we can probably nominate them for best direction. You know what I mean? They they just, they can make the cut for best direction or best action RPG. They, they could, like, I don't think if... If, if the gap was small between the game of the year and the other games, then a lot of these games should have showed a lot of games should have gotten. It should have been a week, a week year for nominations. I feel like a lot of games should have only gotten like one or two nominations, not one game shouldn't have gotten seven to 10 nominations. You know what I mean? I don't think it was that. I really don't think it was that great of a year. If you could only identify those five games that they uh, nominated for almost every award that wasn't a streamer's award, like, I, then that's not telling me it's a, a great year. I feel like 2024 will be that. And I, and I think a lot of people are going to disagree with 2024 being a better year than 2023, at least as of right now. And the biggest reason is, is uh, PlayStation. The lack of PlayStation first party, the lack of like things coming out uh, exclusively them that's uh, of quality, and so people will dismiss it. Um, and I think people so would. You don't think there's anything they can do to like fix that perception? Do you think that Microsoft could can release like a fantastic game, but it's not going to realistically do anything? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, um, I think Microsoft. I think all, I think all three games that that we know of, because I feel like there's at least a, a, another two games that they could put out this year. Um, um, I feel like all three games are gonna be are, are gonna be really good. Um, I think do, will it? Their games won't have a PlayStation impact though. You know what I mean? They're not gonna be a Spider Man. They're not gonna be a God of War Horizon. They're not gonna do something that's gonna you know march people to the stores and stuff like that. People will talk about them. People would, you know, tweet about them and stuff like that. They're gonna do good on Metacritic, but these games aren't going to sell. Obviously, the Game Pass, they'll do what they they'll do what they can. I don't um I don't know if they'll come close to like you know a Starfield. We maybe who knows, but they're not going to do what PlayStation typically does because just Microsoft hasn't found a way to to like pretty much get people out of the seat for their product anymore, right? So, uh. But as far as I think what Xbox contributes to the year, the game releases, because I think third party is going to be pretty good and everybody started really strong with Inf like a dragon infinite with Tekken eight. I think there's uh, just a couple games in February that's coming out. There's their there's sleepers are going to come out very strong. And I think, um, I think third party is going to uh, provide a strong year just as they did last year. And I think Xbox is going to provide a stronger year. So Xbox is literally going to be re, uh, fulfilling what PlayStation typically does in terms of game releases and, and the quality of the games. The games are going to be that good, but it's not going to be perceived that way because what ha happened is the majority of our gaming market and the majority of the gaming industry are PlayStation fans, PlayStation buys. And if PlayStation is absent from dropping quality games, the year isn't going to feel as great as last year because at least Spider-Man was coming and then all the other big games that did come out had some sort of PlayStation affiliation with it last year, right? Same so with 20, 2021. What, what you're pretty much saying is even if Microsoft came out with like really high quality games, yeah. it because the the landscape is so towards PlayStation, it doesn't matter what those games are. Yeah. I feel you on that. I, I do think that you're like you're not wrong entirely, but I think there is some caveat to that. I think if Microsoft Microsoft could release games and get that kind of momentum. But the problem is, is I do think that the industry has been heavily going towards that third person action adventure over the shoulder type of thing. And I feel like until Microsoft 
makes a game that's on that caliber doesn't have to be like the best game in the world until they make a game on that caliber that's received well a few times i don't think it's going to matter what microsoft does now you know they they can release good games because i think starfield was a good game maybe it was you know underwhelming in a lot of areas but i don't think we can say it was a bad game it was a really good game dude it is a really good game it's one of the best games that came out last year but it was buried by the other four games that released that made 2023 so great but starfield was a falsely a victim of 2023 being a great year i would agree with you on that <laughs> you know i think you know starfield came out and probably Starfield would have come out in any other year would have been a guarantee nomination for game. Starfield year. comes out 2020 is game of the no, it's not game of the year. It might get a nomination, but it's not game of the year because 2020 you had Last of Us, you had uh, Ghost of Tsushima, and you had um, a few other games. Uh, if Starfield comes out in 2021, it, it wins game of the year. If Starfield comes out in 2022, what won game of the year? Elden Ring in 22. Yeah, it gets nominated. Probably doesn't win, but it gets nominated. Um, and if Starfield comes out <laughs> this year, it probably wins. <laughs> it probably wins, unless I, unless. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I, I'd it's, be, go ahead. I'd be very curious what exactly goes down. You know, I, I'm not saying I do believe that. X, uh, like Starfield is a, a great game, but I think it was like the logistics of the matter. It was like the little things that kept adding up that made Starfield what it was. Mm. I'm kind of curious that they would have got those things, mm -hmm. you know, ironed out. Would we have gotten the same results in the industry? Because I do feel like that there were some people in the industry that was very upset they didn't get a review code. And I think they bombed it. Yeah. Uh, but how. How big does that that uh that tunnel really go? You know what I'm saying? Like I, I would be happy. I, I'm happy if I'm wrong. Because that means that these people aren't using, you know, the the power that they have to to not get it. I mean, look look what you've seen today. You mm -hmm. know, people from IGN and stuff was complaining that they weren't getting exclusive access to 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 Suicide Squad. So yeah. If you see that and you see the media getting upset over stuff like that, why isn't it such a huge stretch saying that it's possible that some of this media feels a way that they didn't get the opportunities that they are entitled ass feels like they should have got and they take it on in the game itself? Yeah. Um, you know, I think shout out to Suicide Squad. Even though I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's a great game period at all. Um, just based off what I played. I think, um, what would you feel if the industry or more big players took the Warner Brothers route and just kind of said, F it, y'all get the review when the game comes out? I feel like it would be rough at first for a lot of people, but I do think it would start this. The thing is, the reason these companies feel the way they do is mm -hmm. because the industry caters to them. Mm -hmm. But if they stop catering to them sooner or later, they would it would become the new standard. When, when, when you're going against the grain, it's a lot harder to do something. But when you're going with the, the general energy in the industry, then it's a lot easier because that's just the standard of the industry. So my thing is, right, do you think, like, I think it's going to turn out badly for Suicide Squad because I think what happened is people were going to do with Suicide Squad, what they did with Starfield. You know how when uh, uh, by a good handful of publications didn't get access to starfield they were on bethesda shit list and then they got uh bullied into releasing those review codes and then it turns out they all gave them sixes it gave the starfield sixes to drop this meta score from like i think an 86 to an 83 um yeah, i think it started out at 87 didn't yeah it? yeah it was start it started out actually pretty the high PC version it started out at, uh, yes it started the game started out at a 90 and then it just kept plummeting and every time it got like a bad review, like it it was a report on it. I think Suicide Squad is going to review poorly. Um, I, I believe that. And what I do think, you think it's going to review it? I think it's going to land in the high sixties. Ooh, high sixties. Yeah, I don't. I, I, it may not be in a high sixties game, but I think it's going to land in the high sixty. 
I think it will, it will land in the high 60s because it's going to be a revolt. I think if the industry moved forward with like putting everybody not given these privileges, right? Obviously, getting early access to a game, it's I, it's good in some cases. It's good for the game. It's good for the publications that have it. Um, but if developers did that, right, they would literally put everybody on an even playing field, right? Uh, it will force uh reviews to come out pretty much maybe within seven days of the game's uh release. And but I think we would get more of an honest uh score. I think you know might... be interesting. What's up? If they don't necessarily like give it to everyone at the same time, but mm-hmm. you know how like all these games have like an early access now. Yeah. If like you get it that early access day, you don't get it before the early access. So you still get a little bit of time where the general audience don't have it, but everyone, cause I honestly think that an avenue that people, these companies aren't looking at is like, there's so many people like myself that it's not even about the money. Yeah. You know, I just want it for the coverage. Yeah. yeah. I will pay. I will gladly pay for my copy. Just give it to me when the general audience, uh, that when the general reviews get it. Yeah. That that's fair. That's fair. No, uh, I mean, they should uh No, that would be wrong. That would be a bad idea. I was like they should have like a they should have a preview program that allows people to buy themselves access to the game early. <laughs> Just so they get, yeah. I mean, able- the, it, it like small content creators, we paying for everything at that yeah, point. Yeah. But to me, I would rather do that and only like cover big, big games throughout the year than because I, I do. I feel like, you know, you're not really going to, it's so hard to grow without the industry's help. Mm-hmm. And these people are so picky on who gets it. And, and it's just, it's frustrating because at the same time, like, these companies, like, it's like I said, dude, like, I'm a huge Final Fantasy VII fan. Mm-hmm. Huge. Love the franchise. Love Seven in particular. I see these people going to these events, and it's just like, you never see them talking about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, this game, this industry doesn't reward passion. They reward numbers. They reward clickbait. That's what they reward, because if they're rewarding passion... They would give more opportunities to people that love their franchises, yeah. but they don't care. So it's just like, you know, the industry for the most part, now that they might reach down and pick up a ladder every now and then, but a lot of the times that ladder shut, you know, and you got to know someone, know someone to get an opportunity. And it's, and it's frustrating. So it's just like, I'd rather, and what's funny is like the mid-sized people, the people that generally get the review codes, they're the ones that's going to be complaining. Because up until that point, they never had to pay for it. And now, uh, because they would do a program like that, you, they would have to pay for it. Yeah. Now, like the ACGs, the the IGNs, they're probably still not going to have to pay for it. But it's just like, it's just frustrating, man. Yeah, it, it is. But we'll see how that all, you know, pans out. But I'm looking forward to see it. Because the thing is, if you notice, right, it's now they didn't go as far as Hogwarts, right? But people actually started to buy and support of Suicide Squad after the whole IGN debacle. My thing is, Destin was the one that wrote that preview article, right? That kind of put got them in hot water, which kind of screwed it mm-hmm. for the rest of, like, the publications. Uh, like, a situation like this, and I asked this on an ILP, but you guys kind of made it clear, like, there's no way, like, nobody gets, like, kind of, like, no, hit it on because of that, I right? Doubt it. The thing is, is, like, you you have to, like, really mess up to... for for ign to get blacklisted because ig is such a huge conglomerate mm-hmm. you can't just avoid them you can't just ignore them they're so big yeah yeah all right moving on uh let's uh talk about the one uh just tidbit halo infinite no longer doing seasons i think season five was their final season or is it season six is going to be a final one? Yeah, yeah now, they're doing um, they're doing like smaller things, pretty much. Like they're already doing those things, aren't they? Yeah, but yeah. Now they're just going to do them more often. And they're going to na- they're, they're going to these content updates, which is going to be operations or something like that. So a lot of people are utilizing that, like oh, going to get like oh, this game's supposed to last ten years, all this other stuff. Uh, what do you think is the reason for that? Is this like a legit like you know what, like let's move away from the seasons. Yeah, just they're, do they're, updates. they're dropping support for Infinite. Like, I think they already had the majority of their studio working on 
Halo, whatever the next Halo project is. And I think mm-hmm. what you're seeing the past couple, like the past couple years with these, like these seasons is essentially just a little bit of work with a lot of work they've already done. That was like, mm-hmm. that was like sunset. I think you're seeing a lot of that. And I think you're eventually what, what they're doing now is they're like, okay, you know, we supported it to a, to a degree. Now let's focus on the next one. Cause I do think if they don't get their shit together, I think I do think uh, the franchise will be sunset. It will be shelved for a for a foreseeable future. Yeah, um, I feel I'm a little upset because they should. I don't think they should have went into the whole live service thing. I still think Halo Infinite's multiplayer is incredible. I think the the game plays great. There's there's nothing wrong with Halo Infinite. And I, the thing is, I love the campaign. And I want to continue the campaign. I really do. I want to, I, I'll play, I'll, I think it's worth playing through again. If I, I got to play it in co-op, but I want more from Halo Infinite. Um, and I'm, I'm just not happy where, how that landed. There's you no, know, there's still a couple of things we didn't get. Um, you know, console version didn't never get, got its ray tracing update. I don't think it's necessary, but didn't get that. Um, we we based off how they pitch Halo Infinite, we never got a campaign expansion, and I think it deserved a campaign. Don't restart a whole story process. Start from somewhere. I think Halo Infinite had a good campaign. I love the weapon. I I, I love the character, the new Cortana, uh, the pilot. And I I thought the story was dope. And then you know you have the whole thing with uh, Atriox at the end. It's like, come on, man. Like you don't you don't toss that away. Figure it out, man. Um, uh, I'm not done with Halo one of yet. The biggest, the biggest balls, ball that they've dropped in a long time. Yeah. Like, Aatrox is a fantastic character, and it does suck that it's looking like that. That's a wrap. Like, I, I don't know if they're going to continue that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we'll have to see how they handle going forward with the franchise. Yeah. Um, but uh. So other than that, I mean, on Monday, Monday, yes, uh, Microsoft laid off 1,900 uh, Xbox Activision employees, majority of these people from Activ- from ABK, essentially. Um, this is shortly after them announcing them hitting the $3 trillion, uh, uh market cap. This is... Um, this was met with a lot of, a lot of, lot of like backlash and all sorts of feedback. Um, now, just to throw some context to this layoff, right? There's been a layoff ever since January 2nd of this year. Cause I think, Jan- yeah, January 2nd up until yesterday, there was another layoff, I think today from another company, I forget, Embracer maybe. Um, there's been layoffs almost every day layoff from and all from the gaming industry i mean most of these companies laying off 20 percent of their workforce 80 percent of their workforce in some cases we had a discord had a big layoff um riot games had a big layoff um uh embracer i think that was just today uh and they canceled Deus X. uh there was a lot and people would do your typical news uh uh laid off this is having layoff but when it came down to Microsoft, man, uh, the world had to stop to acknowledge these layoffs, even to the point where uh, senators and politicians are chiming in. And everybody, it's like everybody ignored all the other reports just to chime in on this one. Um, and it caused a, a lot of outrage. Um, Mike Ybarra left again which i think you predicted some few months back he left uh uh, he left abk they already found his replacement and that that came today um so there's quick too so they they they, he's been gone like they 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 were getting rid of him a long time ago because they replaced him quicker yeah this is an example Mm -hmm. of someone that that was you know already have it a path he wasn't going to be there because i don't think mike bar is going to stay yeah i think all this was just behind closed doors you know let's let's play nice uh because it's it's awfully funny that he had his person 
in a couple days, and they still don't know who's taking over Ryan. Mm. Jim Ryan. Oh, yeah, right. It's, a, it's, a, it's an equivalent. Yeah, so a lot of people are like, oh, this is like, there's a lot of like, you know, bad turmoil. They canceled the game Odyssey that they were working on, uh, that Blizzard was working on. Um, so, Attic, what do you think? What do you make? of these layoffs um like i said there was a lot of politicking there's a lot of like feedback and a lot of you know, hatred towards microsoft and, and doing these layoffs um i just want to hear your take and where you stand i think the biggest thing people are i think the reason they're getting a little bit more more fire in, in, in this is because it resulted in something that people want that a lot of people in the industry didn't want they didn't want the buying of they don't want the merger. So they're looking mm -hmm. at the merger. Can you hear that? I can't hear anything. Okay. So they they want they don't want the when it comes to the merger, they're like, look, they have something to point at. All these layouts are happening because of this merger. Everyone said this merger is bad. Yep. You guys still went through with it. Now look what's going on. So I think that that has something to do with that. I think another thing that has to do with it is just like, look, like layoffs are very common, apparently. You said since the second. I, I think, you know, a lot of this is more corporate greed than anything. Yeah. I think a lot of these industry, a lot of these companies were having record, record breaking, you know, profits during the pandemic and they were getting all this money because people were stuck at home. Mm -hmm. And now that people are going home, I think they're trying to keep that money. Okay, we what can we do to keep our investors happy? You know, it's it's that it's that quarter that quarter draining. You know, we're good, we got to make more money next quarter than we made this money. Okay, uh we can't do it from this. Okay, then let's just let's lay off half of the staff. And, and you know, and, and unfortunately, it's not going to change because this industry for some reason, it's very common. And, you know, instead of us coming together, and just saying, yo, this isn't cool. We need this change. Mm -hmm. We'd rather fight with each other. And it's it's not cool. You know, when I brought it up and I said, I, it's just not even a matter of people getting laid off. I don't like how people, how they're laid off. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't find out you're getting laid off till you go to the office and your car don't work. Like, to me, that just feels wrong. It does. To, like, the core of my bones, that feels wrong. And I get it. There's security purposes a lot of reasons why they don't tell you you're getting laid off but at the same time that's not an excuse to me there's got to be different ways of handling this maybe they can start you know reaching out to a third party and and trying to secure as many jobs as they can but transitioning from this like reach out to like headhunters or whatever it's like yo we got this amount of people who are you guys looking to hire and then when they have these these you know, these meetings where these people are getting laid off, it would look better. We laid off 1900 people, but we are able to, we are able to land 1200 of them jobs on their exit meeting. It's up to them if they take it, but it's there if they want it. I don't like when you just walk up to work, you just shit out of luck. You gone. And people sitting there telling me, oh, addict, that's just how business works. Well, mm -hmm. business is shitty. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah. And people I'm, are sitting there. What, what's just crazy is people will literally, these corporations aren't your friends. I have friends that's, that's executives at Xbox. And then I have people that are just pretty much who I work with. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have good relationships with a lot of people that, at, at Xbox. But at the same time, it's just like, so this, this isn't even really an Xbox issue. It's, it's a whole world issue, corporate issue in general. Yeah. You should not find out you're getting fired the same day that you go that you go into work. And, and then people sit there, well, you know, you don't have to tell them if you're looking for another job. Your LinkedIn pretty much rats you out. If you put on there that you secretly open it, you don't think someone from your work's gonna see that shit? Yeah. It, it's it's industry standard to to give what when you leave a job, smooth. Notice, uh, two weeks a notice, notice. and yeah. people a two week notice, and people say, "Well, you know, you don't have to," but that's industry standard. If you're hiring for someone, 
and you find out they didn't give a two week notice, you might be a little bit more on the side of not hiring them because they, they're not being professional behind closed doors. People talking about job hopping. It just feels like, oh, you shouldn't be job hopping. Anything in this industry, anything in the world that benefits us in terms of finding jobs, making more money, and being treated fairly is always looked at negative for some reason. But when you when you throw it on the other side, anything they do, well, that's just the way the industry works. You know, well, they could just fire 1,900 people the same day. And no one's going to bat an eye. Why wasn't that more scrutiny than people that are trying to get jobs or people job, uh, job, uh, job. Oh my God. Hopping. Job hopping. Mm-hmm. It, it's just like, I don't like it, man. Cause I, we see it all the time. Oh, yeah. why are you job hopping? You should just stay. Where's the loyalty? There ain't no fucking loyalty in, in, in corporations, man. No. These not. you're only as good to these people. As long as you can provide them something, the moment that provide is gone, it's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 all these industries are are like that. And if you work for you know corporate America, you if you work for a, a public company or if you work it for a non union non union non government job, you pretty much that's just a gamble. It's like it is it, it's the it's the it's territory, right? Um, it's the American way, and it sucks. So nobody has to you know like it. Um, and you know it it sucks when people you know lose their job. Um, I'm the one that recognizes hey like. A lot of these people, um, well, Microsoft is the richest company in the world. They have people getting laid off. I mean, there's different they, packages that they, they're they probably good. Probably a lot of these people don't have to go into work immediately. They, they, they I think they're good with the, with, I, I, with the I don't guy. know about that. I, I with, think it the, depends. the Mike Yabarra's are probably good. I, I, think don't think the, my, the I don't think Mike Yabarra got laid good. off, though. I think he, like, he got money. He, I think he, I don't think he no, was but, laid but off. No, but what I'm saying is what you, mm-hmm. you're, you're trying, like, I'm not saying you're trying, but you're, you're comparing, like, the lead developers or the lead artist designer or the, the person over the whole studio. I don't, I don't think you compare that to every, even, a lot of these devs are working from paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. They're not making all that money. Like, what, what, what didn't Jason Ronald try to say that, like, the average game developer makes like $130,000 a year or some shit like that? That's a lot and more than me. De- how many developers commented and said, I think it's funny you think we all make $133,000 a year? Hey, well, I wouldn't be a developer if I, like, the thing is, like, the thing is, is that's a, I'd like to make $130,000 thousand but but like, that that's <laughs> probably just the minority that's probably you know team leads it's probably just people that are strictly just uh working in like uh, new york like straight up new york or working on the west coast like we're talking about probably like the one percent of people making that kind of money and i'm not saying like none of them make that kind of money i'm sure a lot of developers make a decent amount of money especially people starting out and guess who these are affecting the most they're not affecting the leads let's be real here the leads aren't getting laid off they're affecting the brunt workers the and i think the part that irritates me the most is we're always told if you work hard you'll get rewarded playstation tried to let go of people that worked on uh spider-man 2 so it's like oh you know we make you a game such as Spider-Man 2, people love it. You're still going to get rid of us. Like, what is the extent of to, like, actually do better? To actually learn and to actually improve when it doesn't even matter if you make them any type of money, we're still going to get rid of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Like, look, look at Epic. Epic got laid off a bunch of people last year. Epic. Company that makes billions yeah. of dollars in profit a year. Fortnite, right? Yeah. It, it it happens. No one's no one's uh safe. Right? No one's uh no company is safe. Uh no company's too rich uh to lay anyone off. Um it, it just it's Do you think this is because the companies generally can't afford to do that? Or do you think that they're being too greedy and they're doing it? to save the bottom line 
for investors yeah, I, and shit. I, I think it's a combination of well, once you're in public, it, a public traded company. That's why if I if I was a business owner, a successful business owner, I would never go public. I would never go public. I would remain private because you lose control over your company yeah, like very easily. Yeah, it's a it's a revolving door, and the thing is, you have one job, and that's to satisfy a bunch of people that has nothing to do with the business at all. Um, I think it's like uh, I'm not saying I know anything about how what it takes to run a billion dollar corporation or a trillion dollar corporation. I don't, but I know from a person. That's just outside looking in. You know, we talking about all the people that got let go. We're not even talking about the people that's left behind. You know, I saw someone on Twitter that said, I survived this one, but am I going to survive the next one? Imagine what it's like to wake up every day not knowing if you're going to be able to log into your, your, your credentials online or use your card to get in the building. Like, it's just not right. It's not a, it's not a way to do business. Yeah. They want you to be professional, but they won't even give you the courtesy of letting you know you might need to look for work somewhere elsewhere. Yeah, it's 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 rough. It, it, it's rough, but I do think just to answer your question, I do think it's a combination of both. I think it's about protecting the bottom line. I think it's I think it's about like uh cause the thing is your your numbers have to look good, right? And a lot of it this is pre- uh predicting what the, what investors are going to respond with trying to satisfy any loss oh we're yeah this is what we lost but this is what we expect to gain after this you know what i mean it's a lot of it 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 is it, bullish it's bullshit it's rubbish whatever you call it um and it sucks it, it, it it's it sucks and that's why um no matter what you know people were like see this is why we don't like mergers and acquisitions oh if the merger would have fell through it would have been worse because Activision would have yeah. lost so much like money and trust, stocks would have fell. Um, they probably would have to go up for sale anyway, like even for even less. So I, I don't, I don't think that they would be hitting with these layoffs if Microsoft would have bought them. But I do think you would see these same layoffs, not all at once, but they mm-hmm. would have been sprinkled more re- more frequently. Yeah, you know, for instance, right now we might get 1,900 people being laid off now. I think you would have got that at about that same amount, but instead of it happening all at once, you might get 2,200 in two years uh, because they're slowly not hitting quarterly every month, every quarter, and they're laying more and more people off from here in the next two years. Yeah, yeah. But what's the crazy? Because like I said, when they acquired, uh, well, they announced the uh, attempt to acquire Activision, they wasn't it reported that they had like nine thousand employees then? And yeah. by the time and the apparently deal they closed, went up to like seventeen thousand. How did like that? that? That's crazy. That's that. That's crazy. Um. So you see something like that? I. It's like I, said, I understand why they're doing what they're doing. I just feel like the world in general can improve how they lay people off. Like it doesn't have nothing to do with this. Just in general, they can improve on that. You I don't wanna know hear, how. You want to hear something crazy too? Like with ABK, mm-hmm. right? Um, a lot of people that probably got laid off also, they're probably senior team or leadership teams that's outside the union. Because when layoffs happen, the union is what's protected. So uh, my wife, she has a, a union job, right? And like the company she worked for, they had rounds of uh layoff but it, it affects their the managers they're not part of the union so the thing is is like a lot of people were actually protected and what happens is it impacts people that they can fire the people that are not a part of the union and i think it didn't abk uh that was a part of the whole thing they got the union enacted they recognized it uh Zenimax got a, a union or like i want to say last year um so i mean i know it's at the end of the day it's that's just like kind of it has nothing to do with as far as what you know it does have something to do with gains but as far as the workers it's like that's the one of the biggest difference about being in a union when these layoffs happen and stuff there's a lot of protection there's a lot of job protections um that these uh people have when you're within the union when you're not when you're just at the mercy of uh a corporation you're just at the 
you're just at the mercy of the corporation. It doesn't matter. They don't have to give a, 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 a people in America are uh, at will employment. That's what they call it. Employment at will or terminate at will or something like that. So the employee, they could terminate you for no reason at all. So <laughs> it yeah, is what it and, is. You know, people, <laughs> people sit there and they're like, Oh, that's just business. That's just how, you know, capitalism works. That's not right. <laughs> like, it's just, it ain't it's like, right. It's, but it's the way it, it is. <laughs> Yeah, but it's the way it is until it's not the way it is. You know, we we had a high time unemployment in, in, in quite a bit. You know, rent skyrocketed. It's like, look, like, uh, you know, I'm not trying to like fear monger and stuff. But when you get people in certain areas and you get people certain down, like, you know, these Congress people, they want to sit there and they want to have their hand out. Sooner or later, the people are going to smack their hand back. <laughs> like, Yeah, you're right, man. Um. Let's uh talk about why are the Lakers losing to the Houston Rock? Is that that they need help? Um the uh so ABK, the person that um replaced um Mikey Barra's uh position, her name is um I think it's what Joe why this was like flooding my uh Twitter. Um, and it's not there anymore. I gotta pull this back up. Oh my goodness! But uh, the thing is, is and and no, I don't want to make it like about race, but you know, people are upset because this woman is a uh, uh a black woman. Uh, at least that's she pairs this, and so people are saying this is like one of those quota hires, uh, hires these woke hires or whatever. Um, which is, that's like low key, low key races. Um, just to even react that way. But, um, from what I've read, she previously worked at, um, Activision Blizzard as the manager for the call of duty, a uh, franchise. Is that, is that correct? I don't know. They kind of broke like before, like right. I kind of saw it like right when all this started, mm -hmm. like when me and you were about to go live. Yeah, it says I'm going to open up the article. It says I'm almost believe she actually also like went against the merger. She was one of the people that were, I think, against it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Her name is Johanna Ferries as uh, she's the new president of Blizzard Entertainment. She said today. Following email was delivered to all Blizzard employees by Johanna Ferries, the new president of Blizzard Entertainment. Dear Blizzard, though my official first day with you all is February 5th, I want to let you know immediately that it's an honor to join you next week in this new capacity. I do so humbly and in awe of all that Blizzard has stood for and delivered to the world for over 30 years. Today also brings some mixed emotions, the loss of talented teammates. In recent days, it's hard to hold side by side with the immense excitement I feel about joining Blizzard and building on momentum you've created for Blizzard's next chapter. I want to thank Matt for the introduction, bring some further clarity of today's announcement, and share more about how I see our future together at Blizzard. I understand this is a lot to take in. The news of my appointment may no doubt bring up a range of reactions, questions, and even concerns. Activision, Blizzard, and King are decidedly different companies with distinct games, cultures, and communities. It is important to note that Call of Duty's way of waking up in the morning to deliver players can often differ from stunning games in Blizzard's RAM, each with different gameplay experiences, communities that surround them, and requisite models of success. I've discussed this with Blizzard leadership team, and I'm walking into this role with sensitivity to those dynamics and deep respect for Blizzard as we begin to explore taking our universe to even higher heights. That's uh, a, a long letter, but, um, so they replaced Mikey Barr's role. Uh, and, um, Mikey Barr, will see what he does. He's more, he's not done with the type of work he's doing. He says he's going to travel with the world and he's going to come back and he's going to work for another company that may allegedly get acquired. <laughs> By Microsoft, but um, it would be crazy if they <laughs> just start buying every company he goes to. Yeah, oh uh, man, um, but yeah, it it is what it is. I'm I I'm at this point with this whole uh Blizzard and Activision stuff. I'm like, yo, when when y'all gonna start bringing stuff to Game Pass, bro? That's like that's 
Like, when does it start finally benefiting me, the Xbox customer? Like, the Game Pass subscriber. I need... I, with Q1 being light, I know people try to say, well, we got Pal World. Nah, Q1 this is light on the first party. We, after the Xbox Direct, all I learned is a bunch of, like, Xbox second half is going to be top heavy. Uh, or bottom heavy, whatever you call it, at the second half of the year. But uh, if I'm them Q1, Q2, you you drop you drop them ABK games in Game Pass. You put you you throw Call of Duty in there and whatnot. Like, what's going on with that attic? Uh, I couldn't even tell you, man, because like I I feel like it should have been done by now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know I don't know what the semantics behind it is. You know, people say that like Microsoft can't couldn't like intervene when they were buying them but mm-hmm. i saw them kind of do it when they were doing when they were buying bethesda mm-hmm. like it literally i think i can't remember it was one game it was a game that i think it was a dishonored game that literally came out of game pass and then when they announced they bought them that sucker was back in game pass in like a week yeah and then doom eternal went in the day they announced that if i remember or the week after or something no, so so doom eternal went in during the first batch of games, so right the, the the day that they had that round table or the day the deal closed when the deal closed they had the round table that's when they did the first batch and then the um the second games dropped on xbox 20th anniversary thing their uh second um bethesda second drop which featured doom one in that uh batch yeah so th- th- i think that's where i stand with that it's like, what exactly are they doing with yeah, this? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious know? to see what's going on, but that's like, um, it's over. Uh, I hopefully we can start bearing. The I would like to see the is. crash games in Spiral go there. Yeah, I, that's I what I'm waiting for the most. I'm games. waiting for that the most. And I know people are going to hate on me for saying this because I could buy them now probably for like four or five dollars. I, I want to play Prototype, but I want to play them in my subscription. And I'm just hoping secretly that these guys FPS boost uh, some of those games in the past. So, but, uh, Attic, uh, we're pretty much just about done our 12 minutes of the show. Uh, we covered, uh, what we, uh, wasn't able to cover last week layoffs. And we talked about power world, um, and the games that we're playing. So, uh, what's, uh, what you got going on before we get out of here? Anything upcoming? Uh, I've been streaming. Power Worlds on the Addict Arena. I'm going to pick up tomorrow, stream some more uh, Infinite Wealth. I've been mm-hmm. playing that game as well. Uh, I've been enjoying it. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, well, obviously, you know, we, me and Smooth talked about how we could be a little bit more consistent when it comes to this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're, we're going to improve on that too for you guys. Even yeah. though some of you guys can't stand our ass. Yeah, my bad. It's going to be a short week this week for us, so we'll be back with episode 28 in, in a few days. Uh, I mean, depending on when you're watching this. Um, so it's going to follow up, and then and we should be on a consistent schedule from there on. Um, man, uh, again, but hey, we didn't podcast last week. But we got to see each other in person um, last week, had some BBQs in New York City. Uh, mm-hmm. would, how'd you like that? It was It was good food. Okay, okay, but that was that was cool, man. You had your taste in New York. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for your trip back. <laughs> kind of threw you for yeah, a roller coaster. A so it's a nightmare. Uh, but it's always good it's to see you, um, in person. And uh, so we'll be seeing you soon for I guess PAX East. Um, but to everyone, please, uh, subscribe, join the Patreon for more good Planet Xbox uh podcasts. Make sure you tune in to Weapon Will every Sunday evenings, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, check out the channel. I should have some videos. I'll be, I'm working on a couple of things that are under you no know, um, embargo, but uh, rest assured, I'll have some content on the channel uh, shortly. As always, guys, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.